Hello. Today we're starting a new topic called set theory. So what's a set? A set is basically just a collection of objects. We can describe sets in, in three ways. So the first way is with a word description. So in other words, we're just going to describe it using words. So for example, I can say T is a set of toppings that are available at my fake uh, sandwich shop. So if, if you're familiar with uh, my fake restaurant, you know exactly what toppings I'm talking about. Another way to describe that same set is instead of describing it with, with words, we can just list out the objects in that set. So the same set, I'm just going to list out what toppings are available at my fake restaurant. So in my fake restaurant, you can put lettuce, tomatoes, onions, pickles, and mayo on your sandwich. Okay, these are curly brackets. Um, they tell they, they stand for that this is a set. Okay, so this is called roster notation. It just means that we're going to list out all the objects in the set. So one thing to note about this list, the order doesn't matter and repetition does not matter. So if I list this in a different order, it represents the same set. If I say lettuce, lettuce, tomatoes, tomatoes, onions, onions, pickles, pickles, mayo, mayo, that also represents the same set. So repetition doesn't matter and order does not matter. The third way is using what's called set builder notation. So we're not going to deal too much with set builder notation in this class. So let me just tell you what it is. And then that this will probably be the last time you see it in this class. So set builder notation is used mostly to describe uh, sets of numbers. And let me show you what this looks like. Um, so S, which is a set, S is going to be the set of X's such that X is odd and X is less than or equal to 10. So this is kind of like a word description, except it's, uh, it's more shorthand and it uses more math symbols. Okay, so the way you read this is S is a set of X's, and then this vertical line um, stands for the phrase such that. So this is a set of X's such that X is odd and X is less than or equal to 10. These are basically the odd numbers that are less than or equal to 10. So I can actually list out what this, this set would, uh, what the objects inside this set. So these are, is just a set. What are the numbers? What are the odd numbers less than or equal to 10? Uh, this would be 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Okay, so up here, this is the set using set builder notation. And then listing it out is just using the roster notation. Once again, we're not going to be using set builder notation uh, very much in this class. So don't worry too much about it. The next uh, terminology is the universal set. So when you go to my fake restaurant and I ask you, what do you want on your sandwich? And you say everything, right? That's what a universal set is. Universal set is basically the set of everything. And I use quotations here on, on the word everything because Everything means something different in each scenario. So in my fake restaurant, when you say, I want everything on my sandwich, I mean lettuce, tomatoes, onions, pickles, and mayo. Okay. If you go to Subway 
and say you want everything on your sandwich, that means something totally different, right? Subway has way more toppings than I do. So when you go to Subway and say, I want everything, you get something totally different. If you go to Chipotle and you say, I want everything on my burrito, you get something totally different also. So the word everything means something different in each scenario, which is why in, in all of our questions, we're going to start off by defining what the universal set is. And the symbol I'm going to use is usually going to be U. So U for universe, universal set. And this just establishes um, so that we all agree on what we mean by everything. Uh, next terminology here is complement. Okay, so the complement of a set B is basically the set of everything that's not in B. So it's a set of everything that's not in B. Uh, so the symbol for complement is uh, B is the set, so the complement of B, you're going to use a superscript with a little C. Okay, so that means B complement. So to use our example here, so when you go to a my fake restaurant and I ask you, what do you want on your sandwich, right, you could say something like, everything except onions and pickles. Okay, so what you're telling me is you want the complement of onions and pickles. So you want everything that is not onions and pickles, which means lettuce, tomatoes, and, and mayo. And once again, I, I use the word everything in quotations because that phrase, everything except onions and pickles, means something different in each scenario, right? At my restaurant, it means lettuce, tomatoes, and mayo. But if you do that, you say the same thing at Subway, you'll get something totally different, right? Everything except onions and pickles at Subway will be something different. The next term is subset. So the phrase B is a subset of C means basically that B is contained inside of C. Uh, more specifically, it means that every element of B, every element in B is also in C. The symbol for this is going to be B and then that symbol. So that means B is a subset of C. And all it means is that everything in B is also in C. And then the last piece of terminology I want to introduce is the empty set. So the empty set is what it sounds like. It's a set that has nothing in it. So in symbols, uh, what it, the way you write it is either so the curly brackets or curly braces with nothing inside. So that's an empty set. Uh, sometimes you'll also see a zero with a line through it. So that, that also means the empty set. So it's a set that has nothing in it. Uh, in the context of our sandwich shop, right? if I ask you, what do you want on your sandwich? What toppings do you want on your sandwich? You can say nothing. right? I don't want anything on my sandwich. I just want the bread and the protein. I want no, no veggies. All right, let's try an example. So here we have a bunch of sets. The first one with the U, that's our universal set. So that's what we mean when we say quote unquote everything. So quote unquote everything would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Um, looks like it's odd numbers between 1 and 19. Write the following sets using roster notation. So what I mean by that is I want a list. First one here is A with a superscript of C. That means A complement. So that just means I want a list of all the numbers that are not in A. So here's A, 1, 7, 13, 19. So I want everything that's not in A. So go through your everything, which is your universe, your universal set U. So go through and just list out, pick out all, all the numbers that are not in A. Looks like three and five are not in A. What else is not in A? Nine and 11. What else? 
15 and 17. That's the complement of A. Next up is B complement. Once again, go through your universal set and just pick out all the ones that are not in B. So what's not in B? 1 is not in B. Looks like 5 is not in B. What else? 9 is not in B. 13 is not in B. And 17 is not in B. And that's B complement. Next up is C complement. Okay, go through your universal set and just list out all the, all the numbers that are not in C. So what's not in C? One. What else? Five. And also seven. What else? Eleven and thirteen. What else? Seventeen and nineteen. And that's C complement. Next up is D complement. Go through your universal set and just list out all the numbers that are not in D. So what's not in D? Looks like it's three and five. What else? Nine, 11, 13, 15, 17. So all of those. Nine, 11, 13, 15, and 17. Okay, last one here is U complement. So go through your universal set and list out all the numbers that are not in U. So this one's a little tricky. So here's U. What's not in U? Well, nothing. All right, so this is just going to be the empty set. So the set that has nothing inside it. Or you can also use the symbol, the zero with the line through it. So that was a little tricky. So don't worry too much about uh, U complement, but that's always true. The complement of the universal set is always going to be the empty set. Determine whether the following statements are true or false. So this symbol in the middle here represents subsets. So this is asking, is everything in the left set also in the right set? Okay. So this is talking about C and B. So let's go and look for C and B. Here's C, here's B. So this is asking, is everything in C also in B? Okay, so it's everything on the left with C also in B. So start with the set on the left and just go through and check. So 3, is 3 in B? Yes. Is 9 in B? No, 9 is not in B. So this will be a false. Next up, A subset of D. So start with the set on the left, which is A. And ask yourself, is everything in A also in D? Okay, start with the set on the left and just go through and check. Is 1 in D? Yes. Is 7 in D? Yes. Is 13 in D? No. So this is false. What about the other way around? Is D a subset of A? So start with the set on the left, which is D. And we're asking, is D a subset of A? So start with the set on the left. And just go through and check. Is 1 in A? Yes. Is 7 in A? Yes. Is 19 in A? Yes. So this will be true. So be careful here. So this is not regular A. This is A complement and D complement. So A complement and D complement. So look for where A complement and D complement are. So we did it in parts A and D here, right? So that's A complement and that's D complement. So start with the set on the left, which is A complement. And ask yourself, is everything in A complement also in D complement? So starting with the set on the left, ask, is three in it, in there? Yes. Is five in there? Yes. Is nine in there? Yes. Is 11 in there? Yes. Is 15 in there? Yes. Is 17 in there? Yes. So this would be true. Next up is regular D and B complement. So be careful. Regular D is here. B complement is right here. So start with the set on the left and check. Is one in B complement? Yes. Is seven in there? No. So this would be a false.
regular A and C complement. So look for regular A, regular A, C complement is right here. So start with the set on the left, which is regular A, and then check. Is one in C complement? Yes. Is seven in there? Yes. Is 13 in there? Yes. Is 19 in there? Yes. All yeses, so this will be true. Example two, consider the following Venn diagram. So Venn diagram is just this picture here. We have regions one, two, three, four, and five. Based on the way the regions are labeled, which regions would represent the following sets? First one is U. U is the big rectangle. So it's asking what regions are inside of U. So list the regions that are inside of the big rectangle. Well, it's all of them, right? So one, two, three, four, and five are all inside of the big rectangle, rectangle U. So U will be one, two, three, four, five. Next up is A. So A is represented by the circle here. So what regions are inside of this circle? Looks like it's two and three. Next up is B. So B is big circle here. What regions are inside of B? Looks like it's three, four, and five are all inside of the big circle B. Next up is C. Uh, C is the small circle here. What regions are inside of C? Looks like it's only five. Okay, so now that we have regular U, regular A, regular B, regular C, this now becomes just like example one, right? We don't even have to look at the picture anymore. So let's not. Second row here are all complements, right? So let's actually skip over E because uh, that's a tricky one. So I'll, I'll come back to E. And let's start with F. F is A complement. So little c means complement. So A complement, that means I want all the numbers that are not in A. Okay. So go through your universal set, go through your quote unquote everything and just pick out the ones that are not in A. Which numbers are not in A? One, four and five. Next up is B complement. So go through your universal set and pick out the, the numbers that are not in B. So what's not in B? One and two. H, C complement. So go through your universal set and write down, list out the numbers that are not in C. One, two, three, and four. And now let's go back to part E. So E is U complement. So that means go through your everything, your universal set, and list out the ones that are not in U. So what's not in U? Well, nothing. Nothing is not in U. So this is going to be the empty set. Whoops. So a set that has nothing in it, or you can also use the, the symbol for empty set. So that's a tricky one. Uh, don't worry about that one too much, but that's always true. The complement of the universal set is always going to be the empty set. Next up, determine whether the following statements are true or false. So now we're talking about subsets, right? B complement, where's B complement? It's right here. C complement, right here. Okay, so start with the set on the left, which is B complement, and ask yourself, is everything in B complement also inside of C complement? So starting with the set on the left, is one in C complement? Yes. Is two in C complement? Yes. This would be true. Next up, regular B and C complement. So where's regular B? Regular B is here. C complement is here. So start with the set on the left, which is B, and then go through and check. Is three in C complement? Yes. Is four in C complement? Yes. Is five in there? No. This is false. B complement and A complement. So B complement's here. A complement is here. Okay, so start with the set on the left, which is B complement, and then check. 
We're talking about this set and this set. Okay, so one is one in there. Yes, is two in there. No, this is a false. Example three, consider set T, which is lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, and onions. So these are the toppings at my fake sandwich shop. What are all the subsets of this set? So what are all the sub collections that you can make from this set? So think of this as what are all the possible answers um, that a customer can, can say uh, to the question, what do you want on your sandwich? So let's, let's try to be organized here. Uh, and let's organize it by the number of toppings uh, that they can choose, right? So obviously they can, they can always say, I want nothing on it, right? So I want nothing, which is a zero number of toppings. And the set that represents that is the empty set, right? So they, they would just want it plain and they want no toppings. They can also pick one topping. So what are all the possible ways they can pick one topping? Well, they can just say, I, I just want lettuce. So that's the set just containing lettuce. What else? What are other ways they can just pick one topping? They can just say, I just want tomatoes. What else? They can say they just want pickles. And they can say they just want onions. So that's a that's an O, right? That's O for onions. I think that's all the possible ways that they can just pick one topping. So what are all the two toppings uh, options? So this one's a little bit more tricky. So what are all the possible ways they can pick two toppings? They can go lettuce, tomatoes. What else? They can go lettuce, pickles. What else? Lettuce, onions. And the order here doesn't matter, right? So lettuce and tomatoes is the same thing as tomatoes and lettuce, right? So as far as toppings on the sandwich, it doesn't matter what you put on first. So I have lettuce, tomatoes, lettuce, pickles, lettuce, onions. Are there any more? Are there other two topping combinations that they can pick? Yes, they can go tomatoes, pickles. What else? They can go tomatoes, onions. Is there any more? Pickles, onions. Is there anything else? I don't think so. I think that's it. Okay, so let's move on. So what are all the three topping combinations they can pick? Well, they can go lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, right? Lettuce, tomatoes, pickles. What else? So one way to think about the three is that which topping can you leave out, right? So that first one, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, I'm leaving out onions. I can also leave out pickles, which would be lettuce, tomatoes, onions. I can also leave out tomatoes, which will be lettuce, pickles, onions. And I can also leave out lettuce, which will give me tomatoes, pickles, onions. Okay, I think that's all the three topping combinations, right? Because there's only four ways you can leave out something. And then they can also say, I want everything, all right? Four toppings, which would be everything. So lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, onions. And there's only one way you can say everything, right? Which is all four. Okay, so the listing out, I'm not gonna ask you to do. What I really care about is how many are there. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So there's 16 subsets of this set T. Okay, so there's 16 different answers a customer can, can give to the question, what do you want on your sandwich? Now, is there a better way I can get to this answer of 16 without having to list out everything? Turns out there is. So the number of subsets of a set, there is a nice formula for it. It's two to the N, where N is the number of elements. Now 
number of elements in the set. So basically the number of things in your original set. So here there's one, two, three, four, right? So we could have gotten 16 by doing two to the power of four. Okay, two to the power of four doesn't mean two times four. It means two times two times two times two four times. So it means two times two times two times two four times. So if you do it, two times two times two times two is 16. All right. So if you want to know if you have a list of toppings and you want to know what are all the possible answers a customer can give, or you want to know how many possible answers a customer can, can give, it's going to be two to the power of however many toppings you have. All right. So let's try some examples here. Example four. So beef, chicken, peppers, olives, mushrooms. So it looks like this is a pizza. So what are all the possible uh, ways a customer can order a pizza? So you, we're not going to list it out. We're not going to do it a long way. I'm not going to ask you to do it on a lab either. I just want to know how many. We have a nice formula for that. It's going to be two to the power of count how many items you have in the original set. One, two, three, four, five. So there's two to the five, which means two times two times two, five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, you do this on a calculator. Um, I think it's 32. So on a calculator, you can either just do two times two times two times two times two, or uh, two to the power of five. So on some calculators, um, you enter it with, especially if you're on a computer, you would enter it with two, that button, the up carrot or hat button, uh, which is the, the symbol that's on your six, right? So it's shift six and then five. All right, so you can do that also on the calculator. Part B, almonds, Oreos, bananas, blueberries, sprinkles, fudge, M&Ms. Uh, looks like this. These are the toppings you can put on yogurt or ice cream, right? Okay, so how many possible um, combinations can they put on a uh, ice cream or a yogurt? Two to the power of count. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two to the power of seven. Okay, which just means two times two times two, seven times. Did I count right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have to do this on the calculator. So you can either do two times two times two times two, seven times. Which is 128. Or you can just type in two to the power of seven. And once again, uh, that symbol should be uh, on the six. So shift six, let me try it on my calculator. So two to the power of seven. Okay. Also 128. All right. That's it. Uh, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.